Hi, I'm John Fakara. Welcome back to Fakara Classic. It's been a little while. I've had some personal issues. I hope you'll forgive me, but we are back. It is 2024. Happy New Year. I'm here with the amazing Mechanic Matt. Say hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. There we go. And I figured the best way of getting the year started would be to do a garage update for you uh, to catch you up on what's been going on over the last few months. We're gonna do some stuff with the Cannonball Ambulance over there, this Jaguar E-Type right here, and whatever the heck happened to one of my 928s over there. So I think what we'll do is we'll start with the ambulance and work our way through the garage right now. So let's start here with the Cannonball Ambulance. Now, if you had a chance, make sure you've watched the Cannonball Ambulance special episode that we did so you can catch up on everything we did to build this machine. And what I'll do now is catch you up on everything that's happened after that video. So now this truck now is going to be our primary tow vehicle. My 2005 Chevy Silverado Duramax is no more. The head gaskets went and that's not something we do here. We don't do big diesel. So I really, I like to specialize. If that's something somebody else does, great. But when they do it, to do it, the head gaskets and the fuel injectors, which you're supposed to do at the same time, is like, at least here in California, cost about 11, 12 grand. And that truck doesn't really cost oh much more than that. So I'd rather put that money into this truck. So this is gonna be our new tow rig. Now, when we got this ready to cannonball, we just got it ready to cannonball. We put all the systems in it to make sure it got from coast to coast. But one thing we didn't address because it was warm out was the heater. Now you can see it's getting a little colder here in California. I wanna start driving this all the time. We had to fix the heater. Now the heater in here is your standard GM heater, which are really great, but because it's an ambulance, it has a second heater system in the back that runs all this hose to the back area so that your patient has some heat. And it's got two heater valves. We had to build this little system so we could separate the front from the rear. Now, originally this was all tied together and we had to get it all connected to the LS, which isn't rocket science, it's just plumbing. But what Matt put together, which was great, is some of this is vacuum controlled. We hooked up to the switch for the rear vacuum control so that when you switch the switch, it starts the flow of coolant to the rear of the truck. That way in the summer months, we don't have hot coolant running to the rear radiator that's back there, even though the fan wouldn't be on. So, and all the hose, what Matt, it was all garden hose, wasn't it? Yep. So we replaced all the garden hose under the truck with real heater hose. We insulated it so that it doesn't get cold on the way back there. So it should be nice. It should be comfy for the patient in the back and for the people driving it, which is, as you know, for people who have driven cars in the winter with no heater, it is a nice thing. We've been driving this with blankets over our laps up till now. But uh, yeah, that's the heater situation. Now, the rest of it was really, of course, we want to make it a tow rig. So the last video we talked about the bumper and we got everything ready back there. We moved the fuel tank. We got a new fuel tank in there. But we hadn't put on a hitch yet. Well, guess what we did? We found a receiver hitch for the truck. And by found, I mean donated. My friend John Kuhn at Gold Country Muffler in Grass Valley had an old hitch, class three hitch laying in the back. And he's all like, well, it might fit your truck. It didn't perfectly, but we modified it to fit the truck. And while we were modifying it to fit the truck, I was like, I don't want the hitch hanging down here. Like you see that in most trucks, it's just ugly. What we did is we modified it so that it's up here. So I built what's essentially called a hide a hitch. And we just cut a notch out of the license plate bracket in the back. And we put little hinges up here. So that way when we put the, the hitch in the receiver, it just flips up like that, which is really nice. And we have little magnets back here to hold it down so it doesn't blow up in the wind, which is pretty cool. So when you do a hitch, now there's lots of hitches available online and a lot of them just bolt onto cars and trucks. And those are great and actually really easy things to do. But if you're modifying one, make sure you've got somebody who knows how to weld. We had professional welders help us with the welding of it so that we don't have to worry about it. This truck can tow up to 10,000 pounds. I think it might actually have to be up to 12,000. It's a three quarter ton chassis, which is interesting because like the Silverado is a three quarter ton truck that's 40 years newer, but they had the same tow ratings because essentially it's the same frame underneath, just two huge beams of steel. And now what's pushing it or stopping it obviously has advanced. The brakes on the Silverado are a lot better on this, but the weight ratings remain around the same. So this can tote a lot of weight, and I don't want to put that kind of weight on it on a hitch that we don't know about. So professional welders, 
Then we bolted it to the frame and we did that with the proper hardware. Now, if, if you don't know much about hardware, the stuff you get at Home Depot has like letters on the top. That's good for putting together like shelving or a rabbit hutch or whatever you're building, that's fine. Don't use those on any kind of automotive or motorcycle application. They're not what's called rated. You want to use rated bolts. And what the bolt does is it has a shear rating where at the point where the bolt shears off and it goes up depending on the rating. Usually you want to use a minimum of grade five and grade five has like three little little stars on the top with little, little legs on it. I'll show you a picture right here. Um, and there's grade eight, which I believe has six. Now we put all grade eight on here, which is, which is really a, a, you know, a strong, strong bolt. Now, if you want to know more about bolts, ha ha, I could always recommend books. Now this is Carol Smith's book on nuts and bolts, which sounds like the most boring thing on the planet. And I've actually read the entire book it is literally all about nuts and bolts, but you would be fascinated to find out the differences in how nuts and bolts work and how their function is and how they fit in race cars. He was on the, the team with Carroll Shelby, with the GT40s. This guy was absolutely amazing. He's got other books on racing and building racing cars. Highly recommend his entire series. I'll put a link to this book in the description below. But yeah, if you want to geek out of nuts and bolts, check this out. That way you'll know what a grade five or a grade Eight is where metric, of course, it's different. There's 8.8 .8 and there's 10, what, 10.9 and 12. Point what? Now I've forgotten that one. But they go up the same kind of rating where you want a stro you want a strength that, that fits the application. For a hitch like this, I wanted the strongest bolts I can get, so we put grade eight on there. So this is all good to go. And what we'll do is is that we've already towed with this. We towed the IMSA 914 back to its owner where it's going to spend the winter until we get it out for racing in a few months. Matt, you towed your sweet drift car in it and it, everybody loved it. It was the best tow vehicle around. But what I really wanted to do was tow something big with it. And now the, you know, the trailer, the, the race trailer and the race car on it, you know, that's like 5,000 pounds. I got to do the Lemons race this past December with my friend Chris Overzet and his amazing 75 Lincoln Continental Mark IV race car dressed as a giant horse, which was magnificent, named Buttercup. And when I went to the race, I wanted to bring my RV. Now, that's a lot heavier, a lot bigger than our little race trailer. Could the ambulance handle it? I think the hitch could, definitely the chassis could. The LS drivetrain certainly could. The brakes, maybe not so much, but the trailer has twin brakes on the rear of it that are activated by the electrics back here. So let's go out, because I got to hook this up anyway to go get the trailer, uh, the RV winterized. So let's hook it up and I'll show you how that massive hitch works into the back of the mighty ambulance. What I say, is this the coolest tow rig ever? So with the ambulance hooked up to my new RV, uh, I think it looks fabulous and it drives great. And surprisingly, it's, it's a, you drive down the road and people like come around the camper and they don't expect to see an old ambulance pulling it. The, the faces and people give you thumbs up, it's fantastic. So let me show you how the hitch works. So for years I've towed race cars and race trailers and things like that. So I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of different kinds of hitches on regular cars. Now, most of you are probably familiar with this kind of hitch. This is a receiver hitch. It slides in, you pin it in, and then you just got this coming down and there's a ball. And other trucks just have a ball on their bumper. Now, I talked about weight ratings on the ambulance, about 10,000 pounds. This kind of configuration doesn't tow that much. This can handle about 6,000 pounds pulling and about 600 pounds on the tongue here pushing down with the, the trailer's tongue weight pushing down. If I want to get the full 10,000 pounds weight rating out of the hitch and the truck, I need to go to a different kind of hitch. And that is this. This is what's called a weight distribution hitch. You can see it's a lot beefier. There's a lot more moving parts to it, but this allows you to tow a ton more. Now you'll go down the road sometimes and you'll see a truck with its nose in the air or SUV or crossover and the trailer's pushing down on the back and it's kind of all cockeyed. Now what's going on is there's too much tongue weight on the back. And the danger of that is you're losing about 30, 35% off the front tires. And that changes your alignment as the front end comes up in the air, changes the way the car steers, 
it could be really, really dangerous. So what this does, like you can level out the two systems. Some people just put huge air shocks in trying to lift the back of the truck up, but you're not distributing the weight. This distributes the weight. And where it's distributing it to is as you tighten these, these are just basically big springs. They're attached to the hitch, which is attached to the truck, and then they come back and attach the trailer. You get them under load and lock them up. And now this is under tension. And what that does is it sends the load, the tongue load, to the tires of the trailer. It starts pushing down back here. And as it pushes down back here, it lifts the tongue up and levels out your system. So it's distributing the weight of the trailer and tongue between the two systems. And it's actually really elegant and simple. It's two big springs, one of these on either side. And once you lock them in place, you don't even know that they're there. Now, the other part of this system, which is really nice, is the sway control. Now, this is just basically a friction shock. And you tighten it up. You're just tightening the, this piece to this piece here. Because you'll see trucks go down the road towing trailers. And sometimes in winds, they'll start doing this kind of pendulum thing. It gets kind of terrifying. What this does is it acts as a shock absorber between the truck and the trailer and kind of controls that sway motion. Because if that pendulum gets up into a rhythm, it can literally jackknife or actually spin the entire contraption around really dangerous. So between having a weight distribution hitch and having a sway control, I can tow all the weight behind my 50 year old ambulance pretty safely. And the truck sits amazingly level um, and we have no issues. And it's been towing all this big weight really, really well. So you didn't expect to get a hitch primer in this video, but I got you one because that's the kind of geeky stuff I do. Now we'll finish off everything about the ambulance back in the garage. Now for the final bit of the ambulance. Um, if you'd watched the ambulance special video that you'd know that I did kind of point out that the ambulance has no gauges, no instruments. The only thing that works inside of it is the fuel gauge. And we did, yeah, we drove across the country twice in that thing with nothing but a fuel gauge and occasionally checking water temperature with our computers. Um, that was it. And it's, if we're gonna tow with this thing, it would be nice to have, you know, a speedometer and maybe oil pressure and uh, water temperature and knowing those things. So I put the call out and sometimes you ask and sometimes you receive. And I put the call out and my good friend Jared Pink over at the Questionable Garage let me know that he's got buddies over at Holly. And if you watch Jared's channel, which you should, you know, that's what he kind of does. He gets these really cool from Holly and their different affiliates and he puts them on super cool cars and does super cool things with them. So I was like, well, maybe they can help me. I got to talk it to Scott at Holly and he's all, have you checked out our website? I'm like, Honestly, no, I have not. So I did. And if you go there, which you should, they have a brands little tab at the top and you pull that down and you were overwhelmed with the amount of companies that Holly owns. And I was sitting there just going, ah, okay. And guess what? They've got a company that does instruments for these old Chevy and GMCs. And we got in contact with them. And then da, 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 thanks to Jared and Scott, Classic Instruments sent us Gauges. This is, I can't tell you how excited I am about this because honestly, it has been terrifying to drive this truck with no instruments, especially the towing we've been doing. So let's take a look at what they sent me. I, I kind of, I'm not like into the hot rod kind of look stuff and I want to kind of stock and they have in their catalog a stock looking set of gauges, which is green with orange. And these are actually absolutely gorgeous. So this whole set here basically plugs into the bezel that's already in the dashboard of the truck. So pretty soon, the next episode, uh, Matt and I will take these gauges, put them in the bezel. Now behind here are all kinds of cool senders and electrics, because this is, this is built to plug into the LS system, which is always tricky when you're putting a modern engine in an old truck or you're kind of you know, mixing things together, getting them all to talk to each other. This is all ready to go. So really, it's, it's hopefully just plug and play. We'll put it in the truck, plug things in, and we'll have a full set of gauges. And it's going to be really nice towing, knowing, you know, oil pressure, water temperature. And eventually, I think we'll actually add maybe a couple other gauges to the truck. Um, it's very good when you're towing to know the 
transmission temperature and you get really geeky and know the temperature of the differential. So we'll probably add those things as we go along, but wow, what a beginning, what beautiful gauges. So thanks again to Scott and Jared for your help with this. These are gonna be absolutely great. Now, let's let finally show you what else has been going on in the garage with the other two cars, just briefly, because really they're episodes onto their own. But I wanted to show you the Jag E-Type. Now, if you remember, we had in here a 2007 Porsche 911 Turbo of Jay's. And Jay was like, you know, take care of it. We replaced all the cooling hoses in that. And Matt, was that fun? Yes. <laughs> you should have seen his face. Uh, yes means no. And uh, sometimes no means no. And sometimes yes means no. So at this time, it was, it was, it was we were used to working on 911s. 911s are air-cooled cars, and they contain zero cooling hoses for coolant. Um, this car had 28 cooling hoses, a bunch in the back, and then a bunch in the front, and the front radiators and everything like that. It took us hours to do that entire thing. Drop the engine, the transmission, the front bumper, the rear bumper. It all had to come apart. It was a massive project. And while we were in there, we changed the clutch on it. We finally got it done, and Jay's like, yeah, you know what, I think I'm gonna trade that for another car. So that car literally left this garage, went straight to its new owner. Its new owner sent us this, and this is a 1964 Jaguar E-Type Coupe. It's a 3.8 liter engine, and it's it was restored, we think, like in 2016, and it, they did a nice job, And uh, but it's been sitting for a long time. So we had to kind of go through it for Jay so he could drive it in events. There were some questionable things like the sludgiest brake fluid I've ever seen. It was this goo, this paste. It was disgusting. But we've cleaned out all the goo and paste out of it. It's actually running really well. We put on fresh tires. Um, and they did a nice job with this car because there's a couple ways you can go with a car. You can keep them immensely stock and they have great value if they're absolutely stock and perfect. Or you can do something like this, which looks very stock, but they modified it so that you could drive it in events. It has a nice stainless steel exhaust system. It's got a five-speed transmission in it instead of a four-speed. It has air conditioning. It has electric power steering, which is pretty slick, which I could, which I, well, maybe someday we'll be able to show you, but it goes on the steering shaft. It disappears inside, but a little electric assist on that. It's got an aluminum radiator. This thing is ready to go and drive comfortably for many, many miles in any kind of condition. So we'll be just touching this up and getting that to Jay so he can take it out to his next event. But, oh God, I love these cars. Maybe we'll take a quick video of driving it because really to drive these things is just magnificent. Finally, and this will be an episode unto itself coming up probably after this one, is explaining what the hell happened to all the 928s, my four 928s. If you haven't seen the episode, please check it out. I'll explain where I got all these things from. But we have been playing with them over the last few months with a couple of great artists, uh, Christopher Michaels on this one, Kelly Telfer on another, and doing some fun things with them. Now, they're not running and driving, but they look pretty cool. But we'll get into more details about these amazing paint jobs and what plans we have for them coming up. But uh, you will be getting more 928 stuff really soon. And uh, I think that's about it for this catch up at the garage. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you sticking with me. Um, by the way, believe it or not, I have my own merch store now. I'll put the link in the description below so you can get Fakar Classic shirts. And we've got Super Inside for the Sopranos Shakar. And we've got stuff from the Musket Ball. And whatever I got, I'm gonna be putting up there. You guys can buy it. Or if there's something you would like, let me know and maybe we can make it for you. Um, but yeah, so I guess I'm officially a YouTuber now. I've got a merch store. So any support there would be great, but please like, subscribe, tell your friends, help me build the channel. We are back. We are gonna give you some great stuff for 2024. I appreciate you. Thanks for watching.